Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I am going to try to pick up the pieces of my space program and we are going to try once again to get the Mach 2 data. Uh, we need the 3.3 in order to make sure that we can unlock heat shields and thereby build the rocket that will allow us to do the atmospheric analysis contract. Uh, but we do not want to kill Kerbals. Uh, I've been doing a lot of that, but we'll try to avoid that a little bit more than I have so far. Uh, keep in mind that I am recording these videos well ahead of when I put them up on YouTube, so I can't put in action your comments quite as quickly as you might like. Basila suggested large wings. These are pretty large wings. Uh, to be honest, I think we'll be getting a lot of drag if we try to increase this further. I can do it a little bit more, a uh, little touch. I don't think us getting off the run, uh, us getting off the runway is just my reluctance to pull up too, too much. But then I also sort of jerk it up anyway. But um, we we can do maybe that much. We do get uh, we have a lot of thrust, so it's probably all right. The previous landing where I messed up and the Kerbal died, uh, I should have deployed the drag chutes even though I felt like we had enough runway to not use them. Uh, so I didn't deploy them. We'll just make sure to deploy them. And maybe I should add the air brakes. Again, we have a lot of thrust available. Maybe I'll just have one big air brake. How about that? One big air brake that blocks our vertical stabilizer. Um, well, there is the air brake at the bottom thing. If we do a deploy limit on it, we can still use it during landing. A lot of planes have uh, air brake at the bottom. I don't remember having this little bit in the back. Uh, I think the wing adjustment has caused this little tick here. Good thing we don't have the two wings, huh? Oh no, I, I just gave them an idea, didn't I? Oh, okay, save edits, but we're gonna have to... Yeah, we have to unlock air brakes. We're gonna have to move some engineers over. Alright. So another thing people have mentioned is, well, I'm starting in the 1970s. Well, we're at 1984 now, but we didn't really start with 1970 technology. That's not exactly my fault. Um, I don't know how well balanced RP-1 is if you start in the middle. Uh, so I'm thinking about that, and it's not even in the middle actually. If you take uh, consider the parts involved, 1970 would be here. Here. This is 1970 as a line. That means all of this would be unlocked. Now, is the contract system going to be balanced for that? I have no idea. So I'm playing through this to see that to some extent. I would like to have that happen, but more likely I'm going to cook up a thing where we are going to shuffle the parts around a bit. I don't know, of course they've taken a lot of time and effort to balance things, so uh, I don't think I can revamp all this on my own, but we could figure something out. I'm thinking about it. I did do RP2000, and what the tech tree should be is not a date-based tech tree, but an actual tech complexity-based tech tree, which is why I tried to do an RP2000, which the stock tech tree sort of is. No, it's not going to be tied to what date the technology was uh, appeared in real life, but rather how complex is it really to do. And that's the kind of tech tree I want. Because uh, there's stage combustion engines from the Soviet Union that are very complex and would be very difficult for a space startup to match in real life. And I think that's what the tech tree should reflect. And Hydrolox is very complex. When it actually appears in real life is somewhat dependent on the whole space race dynamic more than if you're a company and you're trying to come up with the technology, how hard it, would it be for you? So anyway, we will see how this goes and then that'll give me some idea of how to think about that. But it's a tough project. 
So we have only a uh, engineer here. And that engineer is proficient in this plane. And we got to train for this mission. Okay, so Taniki Smiths. And we're once again going to try for the Mach 2 flight data. Fly by wire on. And... So, about ejecting. There's an eject button. I don't know if I'm going to be able to reach it in time or de-abort for that matter. If there's any problem. But we've got like three different sets of parachutes on here. The drag chutes, the main chutes on the plane, and then the chute on our engineer. Okay, finally we're going fast now. We actually uh, still have this high supersonic contract, so we'll try that as well. Okay, just a little bit longer in this direction and then we'll turn around. I don't think I need far up, really. We technically only need 600 meters per second right now. Yeah, we've got all the Mach 2 flight. We can go down now. Um, gotta try to extend it. It doesn't seem to have the authority limiter on. Whoops. Well, we we're pointing out the runway pretty well. But then we were last time when we perished too, so... We are not slowing down much. With the air brake out. I'm gonna go around. Okay, yes, no need to eject. We got our engineer back and recover vessel. So we got that done. Our uh, reputation is a little bit better. Okay, still got all the rocket plane stuff to do because I'm reluctant to. Well, but to be fair, uh, the spike in our rocket, uh, in our X-plane contract is up ahead. There's no point in completing it now when most of the funds are actually going to be here. But we must get this contract done, this atmospheric analysis, because we're already past the deadline here. Our green line is where we are, the red line is the deadline. But it says, um, oh, you're right, it says recover and transmit. My bad. Ah, uh, I made a mistake. I didn't need the heat shield. Can we cancel that? Can we? Do we get our science back if we cancel this? Well, let, let me see if uh, one of our... Uh, no, not you. Uh, let's see if the next program we will do could take advantage of... Uh, wow, we, we don't have anything that looks like it's gonna need us to recover anything for a long time. I mean, I guess we could get the crude orbit contract, but it would take a lot to get the pods, as it should. They don't really have a Corona thing, do they? Since we don't need entry, descent, and landing, I'm gonna cancel that. And it looks like we get our science back. Um, it seems like we need very little. But we've already done that science, so I'm confused about what's going to happen. Alright, let's see how small we can make it. But we actually can't make it too small. Yeah, we only have a 1, point, 1 to 2 ton pad and a 30 to 40 ton pad. So 30 is about as small as we can make it. Uh, but maybe we should just do the cosmic ray science in this as well. Okay, well, I think that'll do the trick. Now, we, maybe we should start alternate research on the bet that this is going to work. Because it's going to take too much time out, out of way, uh, otherwise. Uh, we'll try the early avionics and probes. 
though I would like a different way to get down to the power issue, but... Well, the early ABIs will be almost complete here. My reputation sucks. Okay, rolling out. Okay, so we are trying for... Did I, not pick... I didn't pick up the contract, did I? We'll, we'll roll it back so that we'll be launching a new vessel. Okay, we are going to put solar panels. We'll put this kind. And we'll also put these tiny ones, which I was thinking of using. To try and work around. Okay, so let's see what they're at. Bad orientation. Well, this side should be fine. Where zero? Well, we'll see it during launch, I suppose. But uh, just watch, we're not gonna figure anything out. So, we are attempting the atmospheric analysis satellite. Uh, we are also testing out the wear situation on the solar panels because for some reason on my other satellites, we got a ton of wear, like a thousand days of wear, before we even got to orbit. And I don't know why. So. We're going to test this out. It looks like our Delta V is fine, even though I slapped these solar panels on after the fact. And... Yeah. Otherwise, we're just trying to get a temperature and pressure scan from space, apparently. So, shouldn't be too hard. But, you know, I always say that. <laughs> uh, okay, SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. Now these panels are just sticking out. The other panels were actually inside a ferry. So if they're gonna get wear, they're gonna get more wear like this during launch. Or ought to. The other panels were all over the other satellite. So if it was something weird with the fairing, not all of them would have had that problem. But the fairing was pretty big as it is, so I wouldn't have expected that. Oh, so we had different sizes. What I need is a good one kilonewton thruster. Preferably, preferably a little MHNTO job. That's all I want. The problem is I think we're not going to determine anything from this. Well, the fairings are supposed to not do, uh, cause problems. <laughs> oh no! No! Well, the fairings were a problem with this time. This was supposed to be easy! Oh, fine. Uh, okay, okay. But it's gonna abandon this. Still zero wear. Yeah, we, we've got that uh, that much. Back to Space Center. Yeah, maybe it was because we were clipped too much into there. Maybe we should just use the RCS to spin up. Okay, well, I don't want it to take extra time to build, so we'll take off the solar panels that didn't end up giving us any insight at all. Two more months. We should be able to do something else in the meantime. Experimental rocket planes. What if... What, what if we had a rocket plane that ejected its jet engine? Is that possible? 
Now, I have been informed that using the XLR25 involves two chambers, one tilted down, so that might produce an off-center thrust. It does, but we could tilt it and sort of set it upright. We we're using the same hollow body. I don't know if that's the best idea. One minute. Oh, it's not the best idea. Mm, we're gonna, we're gonna not have a hollow cone anymore. Uh oh! Don't shrink. Okay. Well, that's a better start anyway. The burn time on this is pretty long. And its efficiency sucks. <laughs> uh, Ray burn time, 175. I don't know what the 3600 seconds is, but 175 is the part that we're interested in. Uh, so... Unless that's a fraction of a second. But anyway, uh, three minutes, functionally speaking. Apparently, we don't need high-pressure tanks for these things. Let's say I did 1.2 or 1.3, so... Uh, 1.3 and 5. That's uh, practically the burn time. It's probably the landing gear, mainly. If we move it back, it's going to be harder to rotate. What if, as a test, can we just put a probe core up front? XLR25 is just XLR25, darn it. It's named after its engine. It's like one of those newfangled drones that they keep using. We have early avionics now. Guess I'll unlock it. Controllable mass. Eight. Eight. Uh, EC amount, 1000. That's pretty light. It's practically the same size. Uh, looking at the center of mass here. Well, it looks pretty good to me. The center of thrust is over here now, though. <laughs> Let's move the engine a little bit further down. Okay. Now we need a little bit more propellant. Alright, upgrade. Alright, now we can build this. Oh, did we have something untooled? Oh yeah, the probe core. Uh, let's move a few, because this one's gonna finish first. Uh, maybe we'll let it finish first. Okay, launch. SAS on, throttle up. And um, we, we're just worried about the separation between the second stage and third stage, that's what got us last time. So, I don't know if uh, moving the fairings down a little bit will help. Okay, throw all this up, and ignition. And launch. Okay. Ignition. Okay, well we'll try again. Okay, we're away this time. I don't know if we'll have enough though. I really need to stop cutting it close. I'll be alright. Let's just cut it there. That should do the trick. Alright. How do I do... It says experiment pressure scan, experiment temperature scan. But I can't do it. Because I've already done it. Kerbalism window. They don't say that though. <laughs> okay. Um, shouldn't they give instructions? About a what? Oh, th this icon. Gosh, force run. 
Yeah, what if people didn't have these uh, people to tell them how to do this sort of thing? What, well, uh, and when do we get to transmit? I mean, 200%? Okay. Weird. That's just a weird way of doing it. Okay, so is it happy? Yeah, I guess it's happy. All right, stop. Well, I'm I'm sure I'm I'm glad it worked and everything, but um, yeah, it's a weird way of doing it, <laughs> and it's not gonna be obvious to anybody. The poor stock players who are trying to do career mode in Aro for the first time are just gonna be like. <laughs> This is the end, <laughs> you know. All right. Well, uh, hopefully we're still gonna get some of the cosmic ray signs and everything until the power runs out here. Okay. Well, we got that done. Space Center. <laughs>